Welcome to Fresh Eyes Upon the World with Neil Grace. This is a discussion of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and all based on the teachings of Neil Grace. This program is called Making Life a Spectacular Journey. The purpose of this program is to share with you ideas that Neil has developed over his lifetime to make your life a spectacular dream come true. We're going to talk about something that's in the news right now, and that is the explo exploitation of women, Neil. Um, why do we do it, and why do we kind of keep a thumb on women? Uh, even in the workplace. Well, this is a very controversial and hot uh, topic. And there are many ramifications. And there's much to discuss and expound upon. I would say the first thing is that women have been oppressed, demeaned, diminished, almost held in a captive, semi-slave-like state by men throughout civilization. And every civilization and every society, women have been exploited, taken advantage of, and kept in a limited capacity, sadly and tragically. And this has been quite universal. Rarely has there been uh, an escape from this uh, terrible plight. And men have, generally speaking, the vast majority of men, have been the perpetrators, the culprits to the causing the exploitation of women. I think most of us will agree with that, except those who are in denial of the truth. The, now, Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but I, it's, I'll try to be somewhat succinct. Give me a couple of days anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Men do this because of their own insecurities, their own somewhat natural tendency or inclination to dominate. Men with their testosterone and their own predisposition of... Uh, machismo and masculinity tend to look at women as property and they want to be in charge. They want to control them. They want to dominate them. And the, and, I need to interrupt here. That's, that's kind of been the way throughout, I guess, civilization. But starting in the late 19th century uh, and certainly into the 20th century and now in the 21st century, don't women have a a bigger place in this world? Yes, but not at the level they should. The equality, the parity that women have with men is still very much uh, limited. And it's unfortunate. Men still want to dominate women. And yes, women have made a lot of progress, Mark. There's no question about it. And things are changing slowly and inexorably, but there's still much progress to be made. And women are in, look at uh, in Saudi Arabia and other countries, no offense to these countries. The reality is women in much of the Middle Eastern world, nations, can't even go outside without having their entire bodies covered. I'd like to see what happens if women rule the world and said men can't go outside except the slits of your eyes. You have to have your whole body covered because it was uncouth or whatever. Or it, was, it was too provocative. My goodness, the things that go on even today. It's, even it, today. It, absolutely. And, and eyes. It's outrageous. Course, it is outrageous. I, I agree with you 100%, as you know. And the eyes are the windows to the soul. So if you're going to let something be, be, be seen, why make it the eyes? <laughs> because it's, uh, that's where you truly, truly see into another person. I have a friend who was born in the Middle East and at the, uh, grew up primarily here in California. And at the age of 14 was told, you're getting married next week to a 30-year-old man. 
outrageous. Outrageous. Like, here in California, it happened here. We treat our pets, our animals, uh, much better than we do in some areas of the world men treat women. Now, the reason they also do that, there is men use women as a source of tantalization of their libidos. There's a lot of sexual predation. There's a lot of sexuality. And there's nothing wrong with this. As a matter of fact, sexuality is natural and beautiful. But there is something that men do that they view women as they objectify women and they view women as something that's going to fulfill their needs. That unto itself is a very unhealthy, imbalanced dynamic. And that is dangerous because what it does, it tells men, it reinforces in men that women are to be used. Women are something to gratify themselves rather than look at them as equal partners. As a matter of fact, women I'm going to say something very, very powerful and very controversial, and I believe it in the, mm -hmm. in the depths and essence of my being. Women, generally speaking, Mark, are more evolved socially than men are. They are naturally, they are naturally more uh, attuned to the healthy interaction socially with other people than men are. Men tend to be a little bit more uptight, a little bit more cautious, a little bit more suspicious and skeptical. Men to be a little, tend to be a little bit more defensive. Women are much more in touch with their emotions. Also, genetically, the way they're designed, their hormones and their, their, their entire structure, physiologically speaking, is designed to meld much more beautifully and flowingly with other people, where men tend to be, you know, the... the aggressors and tend to be more competitive so there's all kinds of but things that men that are doing is, hold on a second i'm yeah. sorry i have to take umbrage. no that's fine and that is that i think that that's a stereotype about men there are men it is men, a stereotype right? but it that generalization these are generalizations okay. there's validity in these generalizations yes let me a little uh adjunct here let me just say that there are exceptions to every rule. Sure. Not all women are loving and beautiful and, uh, and more advanced. Not all men exploit women. Not all men are, are aggressive or competitive. All, there are always exceptions. But we have to look at why men are doing this to women universally. Why globally is this happening? And what can be done to extricate ourselves from this uh, very antiquated system? Because it doesn't serve women. It doesn't serve men. It doesn't serve the world or society, what we do. And that exploitation has many consequences. And the biggest consequence is that it perpetuates a rather aggressive and separate system of nations kind of clashing with each other. Women in leadership roles tend to bring a, a softer more compassionate tenor to the equation. And that's well, uh, very important. You've said a couple of things that spark ideas and thoughts in my head, and that is uh, men objectify women. And I think for the, I think we do. I think when men look at a woman, uh, physicality is very important to them. Again, it's a stereotype. But uh, at the same time, I think in the 21st century, I've seen uh, videos, I've seen books, read books, where women are looking for, uh, to objectify men. I think it's getting more even, if you will. However, uh, you know, having sex in a loving relationship is always better, at least it is for me. Um, and, and, and so, uh, is that changing? Um, there, you know, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities for women right now to be in charge of a relationship. Yes. And it doesn't mean this is, you brought up a great point. First of all, things are changing. Fortunately, things are flowing in a more enlightened, more equitable, uh, direction for men and women. At the same time, 
men who are now being uh, thrust into a chaotic identity uh, crisis because they don't know their roles anymore. Right. Men don't need to give up who they are. The power that men have when it's utilized constructively and consciously is beautiful. And women don't need to emulate men in order to take over and be more assertive and have more of a control in society or in the family or whatever. We all need to tap into the inner resources of our strengths and our abilities to manage ourselves successfully with each other without having to play that tug, pull and tug role. We don't want to do that. So women have to be careful too not to go overboard with uh, reversing the situation. And now men are at the mercy of women and men are being depressed or, or repressed and diminished. So we have to be careful not to do that. Mm -hmm. But I am very much a champion of let's bring even more change to the world and let women be fully themselves, let them be liberated, let them be uh, rejoice in who they are and let them help us help us as a species to become much more harmonious, much more loving, much more compassionate, much more humanitarian, much more fluid, so it works beautifully. All nations and all people in the world are together as one. Let's face it, guys, we've screwed it up. I think women should take over because I think they do a hell of a lot better job. What do you think? You're right. You're right. We have done that. Now, it doesn't mean we have to uh, self-flagellate. We don't have to punish ourselves. We don't have to condemn ourselves. We don't. Have, we have to take responsibility to become more conscious. We have to vault ourselves forward in a level that is going to match women's innate capacity to be loving, beautiful leaders of the world. We need to be much more conscious of how we conduct ourselves and comport ourselves with women. We don't want to exploit them. We don't want to demean them. We don't want to de denigrate them. We want to we want to uplift them. We want to be appreciative of them. We want to revere them. We want to see the, the goddess, the wonder in each woman. And we also want to be careful not to give up our own power. See, that's the important thing. That's the crux, because a lot of men now become very subservient. And being subservient is going to an extreme in the opposite direction. Here that we were exploitive, and now we're some men are very. I see this wherever I go. Some men are very subservient and very acquiescent in a way that's not serving their relationship with their par female partner. You follow me? I absolutely, and I agree with you. You know, this is making life a spectacular journey, and it's for everybody. And that's what Neil is saying as we talk about why women have been objectified by men for literally thousands and thousands of years. I would have thought that in the 20th century and in the 21st century, as we enter 2020 now, that this would have changed, that there is a difference, uh, yet women are not paid equally, uh, women are not treated the same as men, uh, two people, a man and a woman, working in the same job with the same responsibility, and I think this is just absolutely awful. Horrific. It's, yeah, it's horrific that they're not paid the same. Um, and that's now, male domination again. That's a manifestation of male domination, and that needs to change. That whole system. We are working with programs that have been so ingrained in our thinking that men automatically default to this kind of women are less than. And that requires a tremendous conscious shift in our thinking to bring women not only into equality with men, I think that we should absolutely bring them into a higher level of, of how we see ourselves, at least to compensate for the thousands of years, as you said, of oppression and, and diminution. And yet in the 20th, end of the 20th century uh, uh, and into the 
first century, uh, mm -hmm. we hear about uh, sexual harassment in the workplace, not <laughs> only in entertainment, but in other fields, but entertainment seems to have taken center stage, if you will, where uh, men pay to have sex with underage women. Uh, I mean, some of this stuff is really disgusting. It is just absolutely dreadful and why it's going on why it's gone on for all these years is beyond me it's terrible neil thoughts well you you expressed it beautifully it's very articulate um i couldn't agree more with you there's tremendous tremendous sexual uh degradation sexual um um uh, aberrance, I would say, and, and, and there's things that men do that uh, temporarily fulfill just a physiological urge at the expense of uh, women. I mean, there there's all kinds of the, kind of a, a carnality, a pornographic, uh, a lustful uh, inclination on the part of many men. And that, too, is very unhealthy. Uh, and the solution to that is, again, not easy to to discover and to uh, apply, but the solution is to advance consciousness, advance your awareness, find ways that you can be much more holistic in your interaction with your own sexuality and also with the sexuality of, of women. Because what you're seeing here is a lot of anger uh, masqueraded as sexuality. There's a lot of hurt and a lot of disappointment and dissatisfaction. What is your take on pornography? Uh, some men like it. Uh, many men uh, like it. It's been said, and I don't know if this is true, that if uh, you're 14 years of age and older and you have access to the Internet, you have access to pornography. Um, it turns out that women also like certain kinds of porn, um, and which is fine to me. What is your thought about that? Well, the word pornography has a very negative connotation. So I think erotic um, images, erotic um, opportunities, given that they are, and this is the tricky thing, that they're <laughs> given that they're used in a balanced way is okay. And also, depending on the age of a person, yes, accessibility to, to all kinds of porn is, is rampant in our society. And by the but, way, I need, to, I need to clarify, I don't think that 14-year-olds should be doing it. I'm just saying that it's a good chance that they are. Okay. Yes. And I think that, uh, again, these uh, sexual aids uh, can facilitate and, and serve in, in productive ways sexually. Um, I don't think we can eliminate all that. I think, again, it has to be done, uh, and this might sound kind of ironic, but in a tasteful way, <laughs> you know. I mean, how, how do you apply it in a tasteful way? Well, there are answers to that. We don't need to go into them now. But uh, So I, I think that, again, if a man is using these things in a way that objectifies women, that puts them down fundamentally, uh, as, uh, as who they are. That is not healthy. That is not good. So there's got to be a way that can integrate uh, visual, uh, sexual, um, uh, sexuality with, with a, a consciousness, with a sensitivity, with a quality that is, uh, that's going with to be... With a story. <laughs> with a story. Well, actually, you can even say that pornography, you know, even, even many movies, when you see beautiful people making love in a, in a, in a big time Hollywood movie, or you see people kissing, you can even say that's a level of sexuality. I mean, sexuality sure. is something that's not going to go away, and that we can't negate it or dismiss it and, and evaporate it. It's going to be there, and it depends how it's presented, in what context, what we do with it, and as long as we don't become obsessed with it. So some people become obsessed with it, and they have all these videos, and they do it all. That's all they do is their relationship with the opposite sex, with women, is through uh, visual stimulation. There's something really unhealthy about that. Yeah, that's, as, as I said earlier, having a, a loving relationship, um, it tends to make for a, a better sex life. It really 
it, it's, it, it does, at least I think, uh, I believe for myself. L let's take a look at something, um, and maybe it's at a tangent, I'm not sure. Um, a few years ago, a number of years ago, Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton uh, were shown as older lovers. And I thought it was one of the sexiest, most loving uh, uh, things I've ever seen because they were not 23-year-old people with hard bodies. They were normal, natural people as, I mean, as as, as much as... And for their age. Yeah, well, for their age, but also for, you know, being Hollywood celebrities, you know, A-list uh, uh, actors. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know if you've, you saw the film, and I'm trying to remember the name of it, but the point, my point is that uh, now we're seeing a lot of different uh, uh, kinds of, of, of sex scenes, if you will, where the people are, are more normal. Um, is this something that's good? I mean, like Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton. And in that film, we didn't see that much. We saw them in bed together kissing, you know. I think it's very good because when we become obsessed with um, physicality, we, young young bodies and things, I mean, that's not healthy either. I think that we, when we portray some of these varieties or variations of, of people in sexual situations, we're seeing a much more natural gamut, a much wider range of the reality. And I think it's very beautiful. It's very poignant. Uh, again, too much emphasis on the physical attributes is, again, an obsession. It's an obsession and it's an immaturity on the part of men. Now, some women, too. But it is an immaturity because we're also indoctrinated in our civilization, our society, to think that physical beauty is one of the most important, if not the sole important thing for a man when he's looking for a mate. What's really important, yes, you have to be attracted to the person that has to be chemistry, but also who is this person? What are this person's values? How does this person conduct himself? What is this person's in her intelligence, her inner beauty, her love of life? Is she caring, compassionate? Is she tender? Is she uh, willing to listen? Is she giving? These things, both for men and women, are vital. They're tantamount to the to the tr to the longevity of a successful relationship, and that's why I think they are this. What you mentioned is very good for us to see a wider range of the reality of sexual interaction uh, between people. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in a park, and I saw um, an elderly couple. They had to be in their 80s, maybe even early 90s, and they were walking hand in hand. I was also at a mall recently, and I saw the same thing. Um, uh, an elderly couple walking hand in hand. I saw a woman helping a man uh, get into a wheelchair. She was driving and pulled into a parking place, got out of the car, got the, uh, the wheelchair out to help the man in, and then she pushed him, and she had to be in her 80s as well. Uh, this is all, to me, showing uh, uh, women uh, have a higher power. There are men who do the same thing. Yes, and I think in this pivotal time in our evolution, things are gonna get better, much better. And when men take charge of owning their relationship and how they perceive and how they interact with women, there's going to be tremendous change for the better. We're all going to be the beneficiaries of this. But men don't have to give up their love of women, their love of beauty, their love of sexuality. They just need to bring a consciousness along with it that is going to serve them as well as serve women. It is moving in the right direction, Neil. I'm sorry? It is moving in the right direction. We as a society, at least yes. here in, in the Western world, 
are moving toward more equality? Yes, but uh, I think it's a little bit slow. I like to see it accelerate a little bit, and, and especially in other parts of the world, in Africa, in the Middle East, I mean, in, in Asia. There's still uh, tremendous uh, exploitation of women. Women are in very defined, very restrictive roles in their society, in their families, in the work world. And it's moving in the right direction, but uh, hopefully we can ignite a... Uh, a fire underneath the consciousness of humanity to get it uh, ex exponentially uh, accelerated. I agree. I mean, some of the things with the, um, um, uh, the, the practices in, in Africa and, uh, of, of mutila mutilization. Uh, of, That's of, insane. Is, That's is insane. insane. Uh, taking away the pleasure points. Uh, of sex for in women is that by the way is, that is a manifestation of the absolute extreme male corruption of dominating women by even physically destroying a part of their beings and that's at, that's the, exactly at, the, same, at the same time it's a tradition i think that started the way you 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 describe and that tradition has um uh, inculcated the the that culture uh, that this is the right way to do things. There are many yes, Mark. There are many traditions that are very very uh, ancient, and that have been uh, happening and ongoing for centuries. It doesn't mean they're right. As a matter of fact, they're very wrong. Many traditions are very wrong, right. um, and. In today's world, and even even in, I don't want to go into a whole tension about politics, but people talk about the uh, the Constitution, and everything. There are things that were written 250 plus years ago that might not apply today. Um, I you know, know which one you're talking about. We're going to talk about that on our next <laughs> yeah, one. I mean, okay, right. uh, I, we're going to talk about gun control, right? That's that's what you're talking you're about. You're very you know? very perspicacious. Yes. Hey, we will do that. Uh, Neil, thank you very much for your time. Neil's book, of course, is called Fresh Eyes Upon the World. You can find that at Amazon. And you can also find out more about Neil, his writings, his poetry, uh, at neilgrace.com. It's been up underneath us throughout our show. We appreciate your uh, watching us. Neil, thank you for your time. I always learn so much when we talk. Mark, thank you. It's been uh, uh, just a great pleasure. I really loved it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. That was that was good, Neil. I loved. I thought that was really good. <laughs> okay. Excuse me for being off camera for a minute. Yeah. Take your time. <laughs>